Okay, shutting the door just so I don't have any distractions. Um, welcome, I'm excited that you're here. I think there are supposed to be a few more that are joining us, but we'll just let them try join in when they when they get here. Um, I'm beat my glasses. Um, I'm excited about this. I'm super excited about all the moms that are um, interested, moms and dads, parents that are interested in looking into homeschooling, trying to find out if this is right for them, trying to see, uh, trying to learn how to do it, how this is all going to work. Um, oh, hi, Courtney. Um, let me see how I find everybody on here. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. Can I ask you guys to tell me either in chats or just, well, some of you aren't, I don't see your faces, but who was here last or two weeks ago for the meeting that I joined with Erica? And is it Carolyn or Caroline? Caroline. Caroline. Okay. I, I, your face is familiar. And Erica, Michelle Mendoza, were you here last time? No, I wasn't. Okay. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Courtney Hundley, I don't remember if you were here last time. Um, Elisha, Jennifer. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. All right. So I didn't, this is all brand new to me, um, doing it on my own. I would love for you guys to email me if you have questions um, during the week so that on Friday I can answer those questions specifically or at least direct you to somebody who could answer it for you. I did um, get a new email specifically for that so that I don't get confused with, all the, with any other emails. So that email address, I will, um, well, I'll put it down here, but, but also I will tell you. Uh, can all of you see the chat comments? Did you all click on um, chat so that you can see those comments? You'll want to do that. You can type in there. I can type in there. But that is the email address, teachourown2020 at gmail.com. So if you have specific questions, questions that are um, applicable to your family or even, you know, general questions about homeschooling, but specific questions, email those to me then I can kind of put that together with my, um, with my meeting on Fridays, my Friday meetings. And then we can answer those questions. I'm doing this, like I said, the 40 minute Zoom meetings, it's not a long time. Um, I don't want it to take a long time out of your day, but I want to do just this little weekly get together so that we can um, keep inspiring each other. Now, some of you I know are, seasoned homeschoolers and so you may have things to add as well just remember we have this short short window so um see if you can keep your comments kind of brief so um let me tell you just a little bit about me i am an experienced i don't know some people have called me an expert i don't know that i'm an expert i don't think experience makes you an expert but it does it does give you experience and that's something um <clears throat> I've had lots of moms come to my home and visit me and talk to me about child rearing or homeschooling, um, things like parenting, things like that. And we usually sit in my library, so I wanted to do that, but I don't have good internet, good Wi-Fi in my library, um, or I would have invited you there. But we sit in my library and we talk, we chat, and we encourage and uplift and inspire each other. And that's a good thing. So remember that you have lots of circles of friends and women that you probably could bring into your small circle and help support and encourage each other. That's important to do that. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to first, before I start talking anymore, I wanted to see if anybody has any very specific, very pressing questions right now that they wanted to make sure that we address today. So I open that up to anybody. I would love to ask a question. Yeah, Michelle. Um, hi, I've been homeschooling for about four years. Um, I took a short break last year because we moved. And so the kids went to school for about three months last year. Um, but I'm in California. I don't know where you guys are all at. California. I heard that we don't get any funds anymore. 
um, starting this year. Can you talk about that for just a quick second? Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> so the deal is, I'm in California too. The deal is with all of this lovely COVID stuff going on, our state legislature pushed through a measure that would keep the money from moving with the child. So if you took your child out of public school and wanted to move them into a charter because you didn't like last semester doing the distance learning, you, you there was no money to follow the child. So the charters aren't getting additional funds for all of the parents that are gonna contact them and say, I'm out, I'm out of public education. I want to teach my child. I want to join the, um, the charter schools. <clears throat> they don't have the money for you. Now, I don't know if some of these charter schools had funds set aside already, but I've heard that there are long, long waiting lists now with the charter schools because of that issue. Um, but I did just hear this morning, and I don't know any of the details, but I heard this morning that President Trump, uh, and I don't, again, I know zero details, but he said something, did something that says the money will follow the child. And so the parents will get that money that would have gone to the public schools. I don't know how that's happening, how soon that's happening. It's a great thing. It should happen. It should have happened all these years. We are paying taxes, right? All of us, we're paying taxes for public education. If we're taking our children and doing something else with them, it would be lovely if nothing else, we could just take that tax money back, right? Not have to be paying that money. But <clears throat> I don't know. And there's something to say for it being a civic responsibility to help pay for public education for those who would not be able to access it any other way. And the way that the world has changed, public education truly, and my husband was in administration in the largest school district, elementary school district in California for years, <clears throat> and things have changed there. And it very clearly is the place to teach and train those children who have no other options, who aren't being taught at home, whose parents um, aren't involved in their learning and this is their only shot. For all of the rest of us, private school, charter schools, teaching our own. Those are really, really the only feasible options if you want your children to get even just a quality education um, even if you're not worried about indoctrination and all of those kinds of things. But <clears throat> so Michelle, no money is true. But that's one of the reasons I wanted to start doing these weekly meetings is to help moms understand, really understand that you don't need money to homeschool your children. Carolyn is, is nodding her head. Go ahead, Carolyn. Yeah. I got all of my supplies, everything for three kids on Amazon for like $157. Every, and then all the books I got at the thrift store. You don't awesome. need to spend money. You don't awesome. need to. Awesome. Erica, you're, you're looking like you want to say something there. Sorry, I'm on my phone because my computer is being silly. Um, no, I'm just agreeing. And... Um, there's lots and lots. When we met last time, we talked about a lot of the free resources um, or cheap resources. Okay. There's a lot of things that you can um, gather that are really good, solid school stuff, not just worksheets off the internet that are free or inexpensive. Also, are there people sitting in the waiting room waiting to come in? Oh, 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 oh. you are right. I'm sorry. Yeah, a couple of people text me and they're like, is the meeting happening right now? So. Oh, I have to, do I have to continue to do that? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm yeah. so sorry, everybody. If you want to, in the future, you can have someone else watch it. You can make them a co-host, um, and then you can just have them sort of watch it. And perfect, perfect. That would be great. I'll do that. Thank you, Erica. Sorry, everybody. Welcome. I didn't know I had to click a button to bring you all in. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so we were talking about no money for a lot of us for doing homeschooling. Please don't worry about that. I promise it'll be okay. That will not be an issue. Let me remind you, this is one of my biggest things here, is you are not trying to replicate public school at home. Don't do that. Get that out of your head. Public school is set up. It was set up on purpose to train and teach 20 plus 
children in a classroom all at once. So it has to have the things that it has put into it to make it work. That doesn't work at home. Ask Kathy. <laughs> Kathy knows about that from her, from her experience. Kathy, can you share just like two minutes about the difference between how you started and how you are? Sure, sure. So when I first started homeschooling, I went to my classroom in um, my basement with a big whiteboard and desks and the, you know, calendar and the Pledge of Allegiance and the flag and everything. And uh, my kids thought it was so fun until we had to actually do something and then they hated it. Making them do schoolwork and they were confused. So we struggled for quite a while. And now it's just more of a natural way of learning. We have um, things to learn at our ex or at you know very easily accessible around our home, and it's it's just a flow of our lifestyle rather than just here's our room room that we sit in and we leave when we're done. So that makes sense. <laughs> Did yeah, you hear absolutely. Me? Absolutely. I love, I love Kathy. We um, met years ago when she was first starting and still had the school desk set up in her home. And I know it's hard to get away from that, that idea because it's stuck in our heads. It's how we did school for most of us. Um, I, I think there's a mom that's coming on that, that was homeschooled, but um, for most of us, we had that public school experience and so whoops i need to admit more people um so that's what we're used to and that's what we know <clears throat> and so that's what we put into place i did the same thing i bought school desks i set them up in the living room and started doing that okay. mute, your, mute your microphones if you're not currently talking oh it's, okay i can do it okay thank you I just can't keep track of all this stuff. You guys are wonderful. Thanks for helping me. Um, but doing that, trying to do public school at home is going to cause you all kinds of frustration. Um, it's going to um, really be difficult for you to provide your children with the kind of experience, um, the kind of uh, adventure that they can have just being home with you doing school at home. And I even hesitate mm -hmm. like schooling my kids, homeschooling my kids. I'm teaching and training my children. Um, that's a big difference for me. I feel like that's really important to share that with you. Um, okay, so also, Carolyn, you mentioned ideas for tr field trips during this time. Awesome, that's a great question. So on this new email that I started, which I put it in the comments, it's teachourown2020 at gmail. Feel free to message any questions, any comments, any concerns. And what I'll do is um, I will send out a weekly kind of a newsletter thing answering the questions that I got. If any of you have things to share, like ideas for field trips, during this crazy time where we're open shut, open shut. If you live in California, it's ridiculous. But um, anywhere else, hopefully it's not as bad, but send me your ideas. I will definitely include those in the newsletter because we can be creative. We can have all kinds of amazing field trips just visiting even another family and um, experiencing something that they know and can help us experience or teach or something like that. So, um, so we will definitely address that, Carolyn. Thank you for that great question. Okay, going back to a little bit of... Oh, sorry. I was counting in my head, so I couldn't... <laughs> okay, somebody's mic is still on. I need to see. If you can just watch that for me. And... Okay, got adding Sherry Van Patten. Welcome, Sherry. Um, okay, so just going back to a little tiny history about me. I... Um, I homeschooled four children all the way through high school, from kindergarten through high school. Three of the, two of them have graduated from college um, with honors, with high, very high um, GPAs, um, great experiences. The third one is in college now and having amazing experiences in all straight A's. And the fourth one just graduated from high school. They are really truly enjoyable children enjoyable people to be around i just love them um they didn't get 
the negative, you know, pressing down on them. Um, I shared last time some of my daughter's thoughts, my daughter and son's thoughts about homeschooling. I was so happy to read their thoughts. They said such wonderful things about not being in that negative environment and that negative environment was never normal for them. And they were schooled in an environment where they felt the spirit every day. And they learned to know what that was. They learned to become very familiar with that. They, um, they expect that they, um, it, anyway, they, oh, I wish I should have pulled that up so that I could easily access it, but I didn't. Anyway, um, talked a lot about the rich experiences and learning that they had. And um, they also didn't have like a, a classical education experience. You know, I, I am, if you know me, I'm kind of fly by the seat of my pants kind of a girl. And I don't do things super rigid and strict and I just don't work that way. So we did school from Labor Day, the day after Labor Day, because I do not believe in starting school in the summer. August is a summer month. That is not the time to start school. So we started after Labor Day. We ended the Friday before Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving is family holiday time and we should all be having that time together. We kept off of school until after um, New Year's Day because all that December time is Christmas and family time, just time to be together. So we went back after New Year's. So that's a month and a half that we weren't doing school. And then by the time spring break came around, we were done with school for the year. Also, we only did Monday through Thursday. We took every Friday off. Um, we took off a whole year when we bought a house that was a, this house that was a major fixer upper and we worked on the house as a family together for that year. So we lost a lot of school time. For those of you that are kind of stressing about, oh, but I've got to sit them down and we've got to do this many hours and we've got to, all with all of those things that we missed, all of those hours of schooling that we missed, my children have succeeded they've done very well in college and it's just not been an issue so kind of step back and breathe you can do this you're going to be fine um my children also have had jobs since they were about 10 they've had side jobs and been able to earn a lot of money my daughter kate babysat so much for courtney Taylor there who's on that was one of her main jobs and she earned a lot of money doing that Kate and Stevie and Sarah all um, Some combined some at different times, but they were all able to earn enough money raise enough money for themselves They went to Europe. They did a three-week backpacking trip in Europe and you know paid for it all themselves Stevie earned all the money for his mission, you know that ten thousand dollars and went and uh, went on his mission um, Kate got to be a, a seven months in England being a nanny for a family in southern England and had incredible experiences. Sarah got to go there for a month and a half for that same family. I got to go over and visit them. My first passport, my first anything, my first big adventure. Um, the world is open to you and your children when you accept the call to teach your child and um, open up that world of learning for you. My biggest desire for my children from the beginning was to keep the love of learning alive. I was in public school. I graduated in, I was supposed to graduate in 82. I graduated in 81. I graduated a year early because I was bored. I was so bored. I wasn't, I didn't have any passion for learning like I did when I very first started. So, um, I didn't want that to happen to my children. So I wanted them to have a rich experience. Homeschooling or teaching your own can provide that experience for them. I know a lot of you are stressing because it's hard to keep your children engaged. It's hard to be working with one while the other one's running around, you know, like a crazy person. Um, that kind of um, craziness is normal in the beginning because you don't have your rhythm you don't you haven't kind of figured out how this is going to work for your family over time you'll you'll learn a little bit more about each of the children you'll learn how to keep them engaged you'll learn how to have them working together and things won't be as crazy I've heard a lot of um, 
a lot of horror stories over this distance learning experience for a lot of moms. And I'm so sorry about that because it makes you kind of, it makes you feel inadequate to the job of teaching and training your children when actually in reality, Heavenly Father, um, <clears throat> God has given you this stewardship responsibility to teach and train your children. There is nobody else that can do that better than you can. You are the best person to teach and train your child. It doesn't matter the extent of the degrees or experience that somebody else has, they cannot do a better job than you. Um, so remember that number one point, you are the best person for the job, best teacher trainer for your child, no matter what. Second point, super important to remember is that you, you need to do this in partnership These are with the Holy Father. Um, it's super important. He had them first. They are his first. He knows them better than you do. He loves them more than you do. It's hard to imagine that sometimes, but he does. And he will walk with you on this journey. He will direct you. He will lead and guide you to the extent that you invite him and welcome him to do that. That is 100% up to you. You can do this alone and you will struggle most days, if not every day. Or you can invite him. And I don't know if you, you know, I know many of you are members of my church, but some of you may not be. But I, but you're all parents and you love your children. And pro I'm guessing probably all of you um, have a belief in God. Um, God will direct you in this effort. So invite him walk with him. I cannot tell you the number of times that I had an, um, either an issue with a child, behavioral or, or a teaching issue, or, um, or I was looking for curriculum and I didn't know what to do, or I didn't have the money to buy it. That's happened multiple times in my history of teaching my kids. And I would pray about it and I would let him know where I was and what it was I thought I needed. And something would open up seriously, like that week, usually. Uh, some of the times I'd have an impression, uh, look up the garage sales in your area. So I'd look up the garage sales or go to Craigslist or contact this person. Whatever it was, if I followed the prompting and I went and did that thing, you know, there would be curriculum at a garage sale for you know, five bucks or something or all kinds of materials there that I could use. Or a friend would be moving and getting rid of some incredible books in her library and I inherited those. My library, so the picture that I put on Facebook today, my little story, is a picture from my library. I have this beautiful library that has been such a blessing to our family. And I purchased very few of the books on those shelves. They were, I'm helping, where my family is helping somebody move and they said, well, do you know what I could do with all these books? Uh, yeah, I'll take them home with me. Um, or somebody else, you know, was moving, knew that I was homeschooling, would bring them and drop them off. Or um, I would go to a library book sale and find a whole collection of books. And they, like one case, they were, um, they were marked $20. And I went and asked the librarian, she said, you know, those have been sitting here forever. You can have the whole set for two bucks. You know, so I brought the whole set home or the great books of the Western world that I brought for my family and used and have used for years. Um, that's a thousand dollar set. I think you can buy it used for 500. I found them at an antique store um, for a hundred dollars. Um, maybe it was a little more than that, but then they said, oh no, they're on sale today for 90. And I actually, I told this story last time. I didn't have the money then. I was like broke. We had just lost our job not that long ago and I didn't have the money for it. Told my kids about it, they bought it. They bought the set. They were interested enough that they bought it with their money. But anyway, things will happen. You will come across all the things that you need as resources for homeschooling. And, um, <clears throat> and Heavenly Father will bless you and direct you along the way. Don't be afraid to start this school year as a homeschooling parent on your own, private school affidavit, you know, that situation, we'll talk about that too, but don't be afraid to start with that and not 
start with any curriculum. It's okay. Take a step back, relax just a little bit, give yourself some time to reflect, think about and make a list right down on paper. What are my goals for my children? Not what are my education goals? What are my homeschooling goals? What are my goals for my children? What do I want my children to be when they leave my home? What you want them to be will help you determine what you need to do and what you spend your time on. When I look back on my children's education, the thing that I saw, um, the thing that I see is that what we did was we built a foundation. Um, we, whoops, we built a foundation um, of, of um, the gospel, really. We taught the gospel. We taught our children to love God, to rely on him for direction and answers in their lives, to learn how to listen to the Holy Ghost, to those promptings that you receive. Uh, we taught them to love learning, to be excited and stay interested and involved and excited about everything that is in the world around them. That has stayed with them their whole lives and been such a blessing. Um, <clears throat> what else was I going to, we just got a notice that, I don't know if it's because we have so many people. I'm not sure. I don't think that's why, but we just got a notice that we get extended over the 40 minutes. So if any of you want to stay after for a Q and A, we'll do that. We'll be able to be open for that. Um, I'm going to stop for a minute and go back to, from the things that I have shared so far, do any of you have any questions or comments? Oh, Carolyn, you have your hand raised. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, is that from earlier? <clears throat> okay. Okay, so any questions or comments from anyone at this point? Okay, I'm gonna call somebody out. Courtney, <clears throat> I know you probably don't like having any kind of attention and I apologize for that, but I want you to share with me for a moment where you are right now, your thoughts about this whole thing. Just uh, anything that's right on the top of your head right now. Uh, well, I've just been thinking about homeschool for a while since I met you and, um, especially for my son who needs a lot more like attention and has specific interests that are really not like nurtured in public school. And um, so, I don't know, we kind of had like an off year and it really pushed me to finally take the plunge. And I don't know, I'm excited. And um, when I asked you about like, like, how do I keep the kids on task and stuff? Um, I, and then you said, like, well, you can't look at it that way. You have to look at it from a different perspective. I don't know. It changed how I saw it. And I don't know, I guess I'll have to try some different things. And yeah, you're right. It will be crazy for a while <laughs> trying to work out the kinks and with my younger kids running around. I don't know. Well, yeah. Have yeah. to see. And you will see, and it will get better. And I'm typing a few re resources down here. And I highly encourage you, all of you, uh, this is me speaking like a mom. I, I feel like a mom. I'm sorry to all of you. Um, but read these things. Look these things up. Um, these were life-changing uh, messages for me in my early days. When my oldest was two and a half, that's when I felt the call to teach my children at home. I didn't know anybody who was homeschooling at the time. I didn't really know what homeschooling was at the time. And, oh my goodness, so many people around me were so negative. And, uh, and they, not one person, okay, so you know how the atmosphere is right now on social media where you can't say anything because you're going to be, you're going to be eaten up alive, right? That's yeah. what it was in the early days of homeschooling. And it was like that in my ward. I had multiple people in my ward who were public school teachers who did not hesitate 
not one tiny bit to tell me what they thought about what I was doing to my children. After a while, I finally said, you know what? <clears throat> you will not be held accountable for my children. So rest easy. I will take all of that burden. So, um, I, and I'm, I am equipped and, and willing and able to do that. So please, please stop sharing your opinion with me. It's hard enough to do it on your own. So no, you're in a better climate. There is more support for homeschooling your child these days, but you're still gonna get the negative. And a lot of times you get the negative from your husband who hasn't had that burning message delivered to his heart yet. And so maybe he's not 100% on board. That's okay, that's okay. In the family, the proclamation to the world on the family, who is it that it says is the prime responsibility is to nurture, teach and train your child? It's you. So of course you're gonna be the one that's gonna get that, that inspiration, that direction first, right? That makes sense that you're going to, um, you're going to have it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I sent these little references, these, these apps. I had it set on, on private. I don't know how I did that. So I'll send them to you later. Um, <clears throat> and if I have a minute later, I'll try to change that. Um, darn it. This is all new. I'm sorry. Um, I'm old. I'm learning all these new things. Um, but, but you're going to get some negativity. It might be your mother, it might be your mother-in-law you know, anybody, just smile sweetly, thank them, and go on your merry way. Um, it's not worth it. It's not worth getting into, uh, oh, thank you, Erica. Thank you. If you'll do that for me, I appreciate it. Send those, type those things up for them. Thanks so much. Um, it's not worth it getting into any kind of a negative discussion with anybody. If you are thinking about this, get on your knees, Pray about it. Ask Heavenly Father if this is the right thing for you. Don't do it because you like something that I said or something that somebody else you know said. Don't do it for that reason. It will not be enough to carry you through the difficult times. It won't. Get on your knees, pray, and ask Heavenly Father, is this the right thing for me? Is this what my children need today? in this world, in this environment, with whatever challenges they have, or your family has, or whatever. Ask Heavenly Father. If he confirms to you that this is the right thing for you, then that's all you need. And that will be your answer to everyone. You know, I prayed about it, and it's the right thing for our family. The end. That's it. That's all you need. Remind yourself of that every single day. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Heavenly Father wants me to be doing this. This is the best thing for my children. So we can do this. Okay, a couple other things. Um, school needs to look for you like the best thing for your children today. The best thing for your children today might be packing up your backpacks, which I suggest you always have them ready to go. Uh, note paper, um, sketch, sketch pad, colored pencils, fruit snacks, water bottle, whatever. And anytime you're having a difficult day, you just scrap it. Grab your backpacks, go somewhere out in nature. Maybe that's just your backyard because that's what today, you know, gets you. Um, that's fine. Get outside, let them run around, Encourage them to draw if they want to. You sit down and draw. You sit down and relax. You go out and play and run around with your kids. Just relax and enjoy your children. You cannot teach a child if you do not have their heart. There is a fabulous, fabulous video about that. Um, it's Gordon Newfield. Um, he talks about peer pressure. He talks about how children are so concerned about what other children think. They need to be concerned about what the adults think in their lives. Um, so you need to make that change. If your kids have been in public education, there's gonna be a little bit of a transition. That's okay. And Gordon Newfield, yes, and I think it's NEU. But he is, his video is listed on Well-Educated Heart. If you don't know Marlene Peterson, 
Peterson, I think that's right. If you don't know Marlene Peterson and well-educated heart, you need to become friends today. Um, there is an app, W-E-H, well-educated heart, and it's Marlene Peterson. She's been doing this for a while. I don't know how I never knew of her before, like a year ago, but it is exactly how I taught my children. She does have books and a curriculum and everything, but it's, you don't have to sign up for anything. You can get everything online free. You can buy it and have it delivered to your home, but you have access to it all online. And it all, what it is, is it's you, you mom, you train up your heart. You fill your heart every day with good and beautiful things. And then you share that with your children. Just you filling your heart on a daily basis will trickle down to your children. If you do nothing else, <clears throat> that will bless your, the lives of your children. They will have a better experience if that is their next year than if they were in school doing all the things that, you know, that they would do in school. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing how we have been, I, I don't even, I do believe in indoctrination. Absolutely, 100%. I've read too much to not believe in that. Um, but I don't like the word. It's kind of ugly. But I do know that Satan has been on the earth and he has been working so hard to destroy families, to take away parents' influence, to um, teach all of us that our kids need to be all together, same ages all together to learn. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Because I have children of different ages. I didn't birth, you know, quadruplets. And so I've got a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old and a 2.5-year-old. What am I going to do? I can't teach four different... You know what? Did you ever read books about times like a little while ago before this most recent history where there was a one-room classroom and you had kids all different ages, all in the same classroom, right? That was a reality before that. They were taught at home, all of them, all different ages, taught at home for thousands of years. That's how it works best. That is the best model. Public school came about because of the Industrial Revolution, because um, industry brought people into the cities, into urban areas, and the people were working there and they needed a solution for their kids. They weren't all out on their farms and out, you know, just learning, working together. Um, so it, it became a thing because of that change in our culture. It, it is not the best way to teach and train your children. Um, okay, wanted to do an example. So I know this is all over the place. I apologize, this is me. Welcome to a relationship with me. <laughs> um, you can teach your children by telling them stories. You can teach your children by reading to them. Your children can be taught by reading, by watching documentaries, by playing, um, by listening to good music. Put on good music, moms. That's gonna help your heart. Put on good music. Um, if you don't know classical music, I didn't either. My parents never listened to it. They still don't listen to it. They probably don't know. I mean, there's every, every once in a while they'll say, oh, have you ever heard? And then they'll name like the most, like the piano recital piece that everybody's kid played, you know, a million times. Um, and that's the thing that they know and are familiar with. It wasn't part of my life, but I, I learned about it and I learned to love it. And I taught that to my children. Um, art, learn about good art, bring that into your home. It, oh my goodness. The first time that I took my children to an art museum, it was a spiritual experience for me. I didn't know that. I didn't know that's what it would be like. It was absolutely incredible. And my children loved it. They took some of their little money that they had earned and they bought a couple of the copies of the pieces of art that they'd seen in person. But just standing in front of a piece of art oh, that was inspired, you know, to be painted. Anyway, it was just an incredible experience. Bring these things into your home. Share these things with your family. Your home will become even more of a haven. Do you notice these days that your home is becoming a more and more spiritual place? You know, we we're told that our homes are second only to the temples as, as places, uh, you know, uh, holy places, places where the spirit is, right? 
um, that is a blessing. That's a huge blessing to our families. For those of us who are experiencing sacrament meetings in our homes, you know, and we're having the sacrament in our homes, that is bringing a different level of kind of sanctification to our homes for this time. Super interesting. Um, that is something that will feed us and help our families. Um, as you get up in the mornings, uh, I highly recommend getting up before your kids. That's just like, what? I have to sleep. I need that sleep. Get up before your kids. Get a little bit of a head start. Otherwise, you are behind and you're trying to catch up all day long, and that doesn't feel good. Get up a little bit before them. Have that little time of your own nurturing your soul. A little time in the scriptures, a little time pondering. Um, that will feed you so that you can in turn feed your family. You will have a different day. Every day that you do that will be better. It won't be amazing and wonderful and perfect. It's not going to be that way, but it will be better. Um, I know that from personal experience. Um, but I was going somewhere. Oh, okay. So narration. I want to talk to you for a moment about narration. This is one of the easiest ways to teach your children. This is what you could do for this whole next year. It'll be easy on you. It'll be lovely for your children. Um, and it is absolutely incredible learning. So what you do on any subject, it doesn't matter what it is, any subject, take a book, take a story out of that book. Uh, and it can be the Book of Mormon, uh, but it doesn't have to be scripture. Uh, it's an incredible experience to do that with the Book of Mormon, however. But here, take a book. This is a science book, science story book. Um, so any book, anything that you're learning about, anything that you have read and you think is really interesting, any story that you love because it teaches a good lesson. Um, William Bennett, Bill Bennett, The Book of Virtues. Such a great nighttime storybook for your kids. Put that out in the hall outside their bedrooms. Put a chair in the hallway and you sit down there and read. Read anything out of that book. It's just absolutely beautiful and inspiring and uplifting and it's going to make you feel better. It's going to feed your heart. Um, read a story to your children. What I do is I will preface it. Um, um, I will preface it and say, okay, I'm going to read you a story now. And it's a really interesting story. I love it. It's, and then it's about, and then maybe to sell a little general summary about it. If it has some big words in it, great. Beatrix Potter is amazing for that. She has incredible vocabulary in her books. And kids love to come across a new big word that they can use, you know, and they'll often misuse it. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just absolutely wonderful for them to be able to have these experiences uh, up with reading, um, I mean, new, learning these new words. Anyway, so I'll introduce maybe a couple of big words before I tell the story, and then I tell the story. So for example, there's a story in this book, um, I'm not gonna look for it, there's a story about Archimedes. And Archimedes, um, there was, in that day, there was a king and he had asked for a new crown to be made for him. And he had this lump of gold and he gave it to the person who makes crowns. I don't know who that is, but whoever that person is that is the crown maker in the town, he gives them this lump of gold and says, I need you to make a new crown for me. And so the guy says, great, fabulous. And he goes to work and he's making a crown for the king. Well, this guy thinks, you know, if I skim a little bit of this gold off the top and put in a little of another metal in there, the king won't notice and I'll make a little bit of money on the side. And so he creates this crown for the king with most of the gold, but not all of it, and gives it to the king. And then pockets the rest of that, um, rest of that gold. The king has his crown, it looks beautiful, he's happy with it. And then he starts wondering, huh, how would I know if this guy used all the gold that I gave him, or if he cheated me, and if this crown isn't all gold. I wonder how I would know that. So the king, not knowing how to figure that out himself, asked Archimedes, who was so smart and would, you know, hopefully be able to help him with this. Archimedes, can you help me with this? Can you help me find out if my crown was made out of all the gold that I gave this man, or if he's cheated me? Well, Archimedes goes to work and starts thinking. You know, so many times in our, in our lives, we don't think. 
you know, we just kind of start on with something. There's such value in taking time to ponder, just thinking. So he's thinking and he's thinking and he does some experiments and he's thinking. One day he's at the bath, you know, they have the, the local, um, I can't think of the word, but the baths for all of the people, you know, and they would all go and there was the men's bath and the women's bath and they would go and sit in these pools of other people's filth, which sounds just lovely. But um, so he's sitting in the bath and thinking, and as he goes and he sits down, he notices, oh, when I sit down in the bath, what happens, right? What happens when you do that? You sit down in your tub, you put something in some water, you sit down and the water level rises, right? So he notices that and he thinks, ah, oh. and the story is that he shouts, Eureka! And he gets up out of the bath, runs out of the bathhouse naked, running down the street back home with his servant, following him with his robe or his towel or whatever. Um, and he's so excited that he's discovered it he's got the answer and he goes home and he does a little experiment to show okay i'll take the amount of gold put it in water and it, the water displaces a certain amount because of the weight of the gold i take another metal and i put it in the water and the water displaces a different level and then he learned oh i can figure it out so he takes the king's crown and he takes the original amount of gold and he measures and oh the king's crown is lighter than the lump of gold, the amount that the king had given this guy. So indeed, that poor fella, um, the king found out that he indeed had been cheated and um, you know he would, would then uh, uh, take care of that, that poor unfortunate man who decided to cheat the king out of his gold. Okay, there's the story. Now what you do is you have your child, your children take turns telling you that story. You know that when you have told a story to somebody, that story, that information is now yours. It belongs to you. It is now in your heart. It is part of your life. So I want one of you to volunteer to tell back that story to us. Because this is what you're going to ask your kids to do. So think about it for a minute. If somebody is willing to do that, and it could be a very shortened version of this, while you're thinking, while somebody's gaining up the courage to do that, um, I want to tell you there are so many different ways to have them tell this back to you. You could uh, make it an assignment that they write down, you know, what it is that they've learned. I didn't do that very often. I learned very quickly that children, especially younger children, their little hands cramp up with a lot, very much writing. And so you're going to get a few sentences. That's it. If you never tried anything else, if you always made them write down and do the assignments like that, you will never know that what they got out of it was so much more. When they tell you, what they have learned, oh my goodness, they could go on and on and on, and they'll talk about all the details and things once they feel comfortable enough to do that. Um, so what I would do on a regular basis is I would go to the computer and have them come one at a time, and I would have them tell me back what they remembered from the, from the story, and I would type up what they were telling me. And then I would let them choose a font, and then I would print it out, and they would have their own collection of stories of the things that they learned. I didn't care whether it was science or history or geography or nature study or music or art or language. I didn't care what the subject was. They were learning. Um, we don't have to divide it up into subject matter like that on a daily basis as we're teaching them. Anyway, you can do that and have them just tell it back to you. You could have them record themselves and, and do their retelling that way. You could have them call grandma and tell grandma what they just learned today and have that be their retelling. You could find all kinds of creative ways to do that. So anyway, lots and lots of options there. Anybody? I, I don't mind you telling it. Okay, Erica. I like the now because I've heard it before. Um, and in addition to the things that Lori suggested, Ellie, um, I, if I need it typed up for something like a sample, I will have my kids pull up Google Docs and I will pull up the voice thing and I'll have them talk to Google and Google will type it up for them. Yeah. 
And um, because I can't type for all of my kids at the same time with my loud toddlers yeah. running around. Yeah, right, right. Um, okay, so so there's a king and he wants a crown made and he gives the, the uh, goldsmith a, a lump of gold to make the crown and, <coughs> and the goldsmith um, thinks, you know, I could take some of this and no one would ever know. And he makes the crown, he gives it back to the king and the king wonders as he gets it back, how would I ever know if I received back all the gold I gave him to make this crown? And the king didn't know how to figure it out, so he he talked to Archimedes and said, "How how would I know? How would I know if all of the gold I gave him was still in the crown, or if he took some of it for himself?" And so Archimedes was pondering on that, and he was in the I think they're just called the public baths. Yes, you're right. The bathhouse. Bath yeah. He was at the the baths one day, and he sat down in the water and. Um, Notice that as he sits down, the water level rises. It's it's what we call displaced now. The water is displaced when a weight is entered into it. When mass is entered into the water, the water is displaced. And um, and he that's when he stood up and shouted Eureka and went running completely naked out of the bathhouse down the street. Um, and he realized that he could take the amount of gold that the king uh, gave to the to the goldsmith and he could compare how much water was displaced when he weighed that versus when he weighed the crown and they were able to determine that the goldsmith had in fact skimmed some off the top and he probably died. I don't remember if that was in the story. <laughs> My guess too, and I don't remember either, but yeah, thank you. Okay, so narration can be used with any subject. I shared that earlier. I used it with art also. I would put up a painting, a beautiful painting, and I would let my kids, it, it, either a coffee table book, you know, you could print one out, you could bring one up on the screen, you might have one in your house, and you show that painting and you say, okay, study this painting, look at it, really look at it, try to see if you can find everything in this painting or things that you love or, you know, whatever. Um, and you would do that and have them do that for about five minutes and then take that away and then have them tell you about it and tell you about the things that they noticed. Uh, it never, ever, ever um, failed that my children would notice more things than I had noticed. I would always look at it beforehand so that I was prepared and they'd always notice details that I had missed. Or I'd have them tell a story about this painting. Uh, often with younger children, it's more interesting for them if there are people in the photo. So what do you think happened right before this? What do you think happened that morning? What do you think happened after this? What do you think they were talking about? You know, those kinds of things. What do you think the children were, do were doing while the adults were doing, you know, whatever. Find things that they can talk about so that they learn to look carefully and closely and think about these things. Play classical music or beautiful music. Um, and and let them listen to that and let them talk about what they talk about what they felt, what it made them feel. Uh, maybe give them um, paints or colored paper, colored paper, colored pencils and sketch pads and draw what they feel. There is so much you can do and all of it feels fun. All of it feels like, wait, this can't count for school because we're having such a great time. When did we get the message that learning was not fun, <laughs> that it had to be hard, that it had to be stressful? Now, here is one thing I didn't do with my children that I would change a little bit, but they still succeeded without it. We didn't write very much. Um, we wrote, well, you know what? Actually, when I look back, I'm learning, yeah, we did. We wrote in our journals. And that is what helped them to be great writers in college, even though we never wrote a book report or a term paper or a research paper. I hated those in school. I thought that was so boring. Let me learn about it and then let me tell you about it because I found all kinds of really great, cool, interesting things. But I don't want to look up all the resources. I don't want to make a bibliography. I don't want to have to notate everything. Yeah, Courtney's with me, right? That's not fun. Um, what's fun is the learning and the sharing. When they get to college, they can do that. When it's required, they can figure that out. They're good kids, they're smart, they're bright, they're so different. Okay, not in a braggy way at all. I swear, I promise, all of you who know me could testify to this, right? I love my kids, they are great people. 
They are great people. They are fun to be around. They love learning. They, they can converse politely with grownups. I have had so many adult women in my wards come up and talk to me and say, I just spent like half an hour talking to your teenage daughter about my problems. And she helped me. You know, she's like, I, I forget that they're teenagers. They just are so wise for their years. All it is, I mean, really, truly my reflecting about it, what it is, is they have the spirit. They have kept that gift of the Holy Ghost with them. They, um, have invited good, wholesome things into their lives. They have not invited the negative. They've pushed it out, you know, when they've been around that. It makes a difference. Do you notice that in yourselves? This is my huge revelation from these, these last couple of months, where in the beginning, I thought I had a responsibility as um, a citizen of this great nation, this land that I love. I am so patriotic. And it hurts my heart to see what's happening right now. I get emotional every time I talk about it. it hurts my heart. I can't believe we're here. I can't believe it happened like that. Um, you, you know, it didn't. We've been leading up to it in all these years, right? But it feels like it happened so fast. Um, I feel this great, this like desire to fight for my country, you know, to stand up for what's right and all those things. But on uh, fast Sunday, two fast Sundays ago, when I was praying and fasting about what is my role? What do I do? My sister-in-law was praying the same day. Another sister-in-law, you know, we, we talked afterwards. The three of us got the same direction from Heavenly Father. Focus on your family. All three of us, completely independent of each other, focus on your family. Okay. All right. So what did I do? Well, I kept sneaking into social media. <laughs> to see what was going on because because I could at least plant a seed I could at least give a positive response put a positive option out there for people who were talking about all the garbage you know no you can't no you can't not anymore um it's like there's a big giant wall of graffiti okay it's it, it's out there and you go and paint a pretty flower on that wall it's a beautiful flower but it's not having the impact that you will have by bringing your children home, teaching your children, by filling your heart with everything that's good and beautiful and true and wholesome, and then sharing that with your children. That's how you make a difference today. We're past the day when you could have taught people and, and uh, made a difference out there. There may be a day when we are called up to go out in the world and do something. If we're listening, if we are learning ourselves how to hear him, right? That's our counsel these days, learn. How do you hear him? Increase your ability to receive personal inspiration. If you're doing that, then you'll know. You'll know what you're supposed to do out there. You'll know when you're supposed to do something out there. In the meantime, stay focused on your family. That is the call, I think, to us right now. That's why there are throngs of moms that are saying, I can't send my child back. I can't do that. I need to bring them home. But then the world says, hold on a second. You don't have any money. You don't have any curriculum. You don't know what you're doing. You, didn't, you don't have experience doing this. Then you, trying to do public school at home, you are failing. <laughs> You're struggling. It's hard. It seems absolutely insurmountable, impossible. You were never supposed to do public school at home. That's not what he's calling you to do. Listen carefully. You are called to teach and train your children. You don't need a public school model to do that. It doesn't require anything. It requires you and your children. You could be in a car, right? You could be in a park. You could be out in your backyard. You could be huddled under a blanket fort in your living room with your kids. You are to train and teach your children. You are the best teacher they have. You were called up for this. We, for years, as a nation, as a people, have abdicated 
the stewardship responsibility that Heavenly Father gave us to teach and train our children to the public schools. It's what everybody did. It's what we, how we were taught. So I'm, um, you know, that's, well, we did that. That's okay. Um, now, for all kinds of different reasons, we're being called home, all of us. So believe in yourself, know that you can do this, use the resources around you, everybody here, you know, look at all these names. If you're not friends with these people, friend them, get to know these people so that you have support. So you have others you can call on. Like I said, new email for me. What did I say it was? <laughs> Teach our own 2020 at gmail.com. Email questions, email comments. I will, like I said, I'll put that out in a weekly newsletter to anybody who wants to be on it. We'll share our resources. I am not going to tell you, use this curriculum or use that curriculum. But anybody who wants to say, oh, there's this and this and this and this and this. Great. I'll share it. You know, there's this kind of, of homeschooling, you know, classic education, classical education. There's this kind, unschooling. And there's everything in between everything in between. I'm never going to tell you, you should do what I did. Okay. Never, never, never. Heavenly father will tell you what, you know, Susie, Joe and Frank, you know, need for today. He will tell you exactly what they need today. And you do that. In the beginning, you're going to question and you're going to go, wait, that seems too easy. Or, but we love that. <sighs> Well, awesome. Heavenly Father loves you. And he's letting you do something that you love or that your children love. And that's called learning. Um, I promised a friend I would share this story. She's a, a super funny. She is a school teacher, former school teacher, retired. Courtney, I'm talking, and Morgan, is Morgan still here? Yes. And Sherry, I'm talking about Janice Faulkner. <laughs> and um, during the time I was homeschooling, when I told you that I got all this negative, oh my goodness, top of the list. <laughs> top of the list with Janice and she was my visiting teacher at the time she would take my children out to breakfast or lunch two times a year to grill them and see how they were doing <laughs> and it scared me every time but I felt like it's okay it's okay let him go and um my kids totally held their own and over the years she gained respect for me for what we were doing now she is one of my biggest supporters she shared a story with me that she wanted me to share with you. Um, she was teaching school before she got married in Canoga Park. And she had a special ed class. It was um, ninth grade. And these kids couldn't read. And she was determined that, you know, they've got to know how to read these poor kids. They need the world opened up to them. They have got to learn how to read. So she, who cares, she's a teacher who cares and loves her kids. She was looking for ways that she could help these kids learn to read. She sat down with each one of them. She said, what do you love? What do you like? You like music? Do you listen to music? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen. What do you listen to? What's your favorite song? And so they would tell her what their favorite song was. So this sweet lady goes and prints out music and lyrics to each one of those children's favorite songs. Then they started singing them in class and they would follow along try, you know, do their best to follow along with the words of the song. And then as they were singing, she would talk about some of the words, some of the word sounds, some of the, you know, things point out some things about the words, but they sang these songs a bunch till they knew and they learned each other's songs and things. And then she prints out just the lyrics and she cuts them up and she gives each child the lyrics to their song all mixed up and has them put the lines in order, right? By the end of the school year, every single one of those kids could read. She opened up the world to those kids. Do not worry that your child is in third grade and they don't know their multiplication tables. Do not pound things into your children's heads. That is not how we teach our children. That is how schools teach our children. And they feel stressed and, you know, and freaked out because they feel all that pressure. That's not the best way to teach. Michelle, did you have a comment, sweetie? Okay. Um, no, they're just agreeing with you. Okay, okay. There is a study that was done, two eight-year-old boys that were kept out of school, different families, kept out of school until they were eight, which I think is super interesting. Age eight, you know, it's a little bit significant to us. 
they were, they just had normal family experiences, but no formal teaching experiences. They were put into their third grade classrooms and it took the one boy three months, the other one six months to catch up to the rest of the class. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. All those years of stress and pounding things into our children's heads, not necessary, not necessary. Enjoy them. Learn about things that you love and that they love, and then let that learning, your learning and your excitement about learning trickle down to your children. That Well-Educated Heart app, oh my goodness, you will bless the lives of your children forever and your own life if you spend the first months of homeschooling just listening to her podcasts reading the things that are there, even just skimming the pictures and the quotes that are there. She has a Facebook page too. So if you cannot go down, if you can get on Facebook and avoid going down the rabbit hole and just go to Well-Educated Heart and read the good things that are there or to her Libraries of Hope, that's another Facebook page where you can share the good things that she posts. Um, you can do that. If, if you can't, like me, I think I'm gonna have to be off Facebook. Um, and I can go to the app and I can remind myself about all of the beautiful things that are there to teach me I need to feed my heart every day so that I can then bring that to my children. You will learn how to, uh, what, like change your own way of thinking. You're going to have to change it. Some of you, you know, I had to change mine. Kathy had to change hers. I remember that transition. Courtney's interested and willing to change hers, to change from that idea of public school education, which has its place, um, to this new idea of how we teach and train our children's hearts. If you're struggling because your kids aren't responding to you right now, please do not despair. They have been away from you. They have had a different experience. It, like I said about that uh, video, Gordon Newfield, you cannot parent a child whose heart you do not have. You can gain that heart, you can get it back, but you cannot parent a child whose heart you do not have. If you have friends, other moms talking to you in despair because they just know they couldn't teach their children because they couldn't reach them, they've been maybe maybe public school maybe video games maybe you know whatever okay thanks michelle whatever um if if they are not ready to listen right now you can pray and figure out how you reach their heart and um and that will be a process please don't sweat that you're not doing curriculum day one that is just not important for all of us this year this year with everything crazy that's going on in the world our kids just need to feel safe. They need to feel a peace and a calmness that we can bring to them. So I'm sorry, I'm done with my soapbox preaching lesson, whatever. What comments or thoughts do you have? Uh, Lori, I guess I just wanted to say, uh, it's you are making a difference. Uh, like even though you feel like you're not making a difference and that you can't like speak your mind like I'm glad that you did because it's helping me because you know like I I'm having a change of heart because I always wanted to be a nurse growing up and I didn't get to finish school because I was like uh oh, like if I it was just I was on the waiting list for so long and I was like oh, I'm gonna be having kids by the time I can't have kids anymore <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to be like, anyway, so, so anyways, I'm like, I, I appreciate all the, the love and the spirit that you have brought to my day and the truth that you're speaking and you're, that you're like motivating us moms. Like, it's good to have this pep talk. <laughs> Cause I mean, like, I feel like I'm at a teacher conference now. Like, <laughs> like I am the teacher <laughs> and, um, yeah, so you're helping me change my heart because I mean, it even talks about it, my patriarchal blessing. And I've always kind of like tried to ignore it because 
everyone in my family is in the education business. Like in, in Arizona, like my family started a charter school because they were so sick of public schools. Yeah. And, you know, two of my sisters graduated with their teaching degrees. And I was like, no, that's not me. Like I want to be a nurse. And so now I'm like, oh, it does say my practical blessing that I need to be teaching my kids while they're young and I need to get the education from the best books. So I think the spirit's trying to change my heart. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for your kind words and thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. I, I had a couple of thoughts while you're talking, if, if it's okay to share for a sec. Um, the first one, when you were talking about um, all the people in your life and their well-meaning-ish uh, concern about homeschooling, um, I got a lot of that too. I think any of us who have homeschooled or ever out loud considered homeschooling have probably got comments from someone. Um, and a lot of times, it, well, often from total strangers and other times from people very close to you. Um, and for me, I kind of just had to say to them, um, and everyone's going to take their own approach, but especially when it came from like mothers and mothers-in-law and sisters, I would just say to them, you know what? I am so thankful that I have so many people who are worried about my children because in those instances, I knew their comments came from a place of love yep. for my children. And I would say, I, I'm so blessed that my children have so many people that care for them. However, like Lori said, I, I've prayed about this and this is what I feel like we're supposed to do. Now the strangers in the grocery store, when you go there with your entourage of five children at 11 in the morning and they're like, why aren't you in school? Um, and then they look at you like you're an alien when you say you homeschool and luckily there won't be as, you know, that's not going to be as abnormal, but you just, you just be proud and, and just go with it. Um, people are always going to have their opinions about all the things. And if you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, even if it's just for this faith, like I love homeschooling for me, it's not the right answer for everybody. Um, and it's not the right answer all of the times like we've talked about before. But if you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, the, what you felt like you've been guided to, even if it's hard, just tell them to something rude. Just tell it, not really, but in your head. Say it. Um, I had like four things I wanted to say and I've forgotten them all. But um, classical music, totally, totally agree with Lori. A lot of times while we're working, we have this beautiful schoolroom set up and most of the time we end up around the kitchen table. And that's just food is where um, we turn on Pandora and we just turn on classical music really lightly in the background. Um, a lot we I love um, Pride and Prejudice uh, film score. It's all instrumental music and but it's kind of more new age instrumental. So things like David Lands and um, oh goodness can't think of any of them. But but we love them and my kids will walk around humming them and they'll pull up pieces and start playing it on the piano or viola or something. Um, but it's beautiful and calm and it just creates a nice atmosphere and it's uplifting and edifying. Um, and then the last thing with writing, um, Lori had said she wished that she had her kids do more writing. I probably overdo it with the writing. Kathy's probably over there laughing at me. I, <laughs> I do too much sometimes. But one thing I found, especially like with writing, if the assignment is not about language arts, just let them write. And so we do a lot of narration and I do make my kids a lot of times write it because I have to turn in samples because I am with the charter. Um, but don't grade it. Don't look for punctuation. Don't look for spelling. Don't look for anything. Just, just let them write and say, that is a great job. And if they go back and they want to fix it, let them. But if the point of assignment is not, um, is not about language arts, then then don't, don't stress them out about trying to make it correct. Okay, I think that was all of my things. Thank you, that's wonderful. Anybody else? Um, just an aside, I just watched an amazing video yesterday about teaching spelling. Oh my goodness. Uh, it completely confirmed my beliefs and kind of what we did for a little while. We did spelling workout, you know, it was a workbook, whatever. And I thought, I don't like this. Um, spelling, if a child sees a word, 
written wrong. Like you do a spelling quiz and you say, okay, time for a pop quiz. Get out your paper and number at one to 10. You know, like we used to do in school. All right, I'm gonna tell you, you know, the, you know, the word is important, um, consequential, you know, whatever. You're giving these words and they're guessing, right? They write it down with the letters in sequence, wrong letters, wrong sequence, something is wrong. But that's the message, that's that word now in their head. That's what they saw. Better to let them practice spelling the words like a spelling bee. That's how it used to be, you know, and it was, you know, the word is attitude, A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E, right. Um, and they would just, they wouldn't see it in print. They would just hear the letters in the sequential order and, you know, there are such simple ways to do things and we make it so hard. Don't make it hard, make it easy for yourself. Enjoy this first year. If it's not your first year and you're going back to it or you just are here for support, support these other mamas, help them know that they can do this. Okay, anybody else, any thoughts? And remember, you're emailing me any questions and um, we're gonna talk about some of those. We're going to um, put them in the newsletter. Yes, N tell me how you pronounce your name, sweetie. Oh, it's Nini. Nini. Okay. Hello there. Hi. Um, so I'm from the Pasadena stake, so I don't know anybody in this group. I just got added in. Um, but I think most of my, um, insecurity, or I have a lot of them, but the first one is just kind of the logistics of like, um, anyone in California out there who has pulled their child out of public school and just, you know, the process of like, okay, so do I contact the principal? Do I contact the um, uh, school district? The school district, yes. Um, and then I don't know I've heard of you know the host the homeschool legal defense organization, and I'm so I've just got a lot of information I guess in my head that I'm just like okay, so where do I actually start? Okay, um, so practical practical information. Yeah. Um, all of you who haven't already, go to Homeschool Legal Defense Association, or HS, oops, open NH, HSLDA, and sign up. There's a yearly, an annual fee. If you can't pay the annual fee, it's $10 a month. It's worth it. They become your legal advocates if you ever need that. They are an incredible resource. They will tell you what you need to do for your specific state. I know for the state of California, there's a private school affidavit that you go online, you fill it out, and then you are now a private school and um, you're legal. Uh, homeschool, the HSLDA will tell you exactly how to fill out that form. They'll tell you every little thing, every, for every line item, they tell you what to put down. So that's fabulous. Um, they also help you with transcripts, how to create a transcript. They teach you all of those things. Um, I will include that in the newsletter. Um, as far as taking them out of school, I have, ha I, have, I have participated with some friends in some nightmare situations where the school district you know, would tell them, no, you can't take your children out. You can't do that legally if they're not going to another, uh, like a charter or a private school. I mean, they, would, they outright lied to a couple of my friends. I went down with them because they were nervous about that, you know, and, and I went down and just said, I'm so sorry, but that's not true. They can legally take their child out. We're just here to inform you. Have a good day. You know, and that's it. The, in Utah, there was some information circulating saying that you have to let your school district know, and then you have to wait for them to send you a, le a letter certificate. I don't remember, Kathy, exactly what it was that says that they have now authorized you or whatever, not true. You just notify them. You set up or do whatever you have to do to say you're a private school, that's it. You don't have to wait for anything. You have a legal right to pull your child and to school them. Now, in the days that come, that may become a fight. There may become a big homeschool. You gotta know that's coming. But HSLDA, they fight for the rights to homeschool in every single state. And they fight for that in other countries. They fight for families, um, families' right to educate their family. Okay, somebody has want, given us some wonderful information about HSLDA. Thank you very much. 
wonderful. Yeah, they're a great organization. So definitely sign up with them. That will be your little in your corner, um, somebody to help you there. Okay, what else is in here? Okay. Anything else? Um, so I guess my question is, so in signing up for the, um, the HSL deals, is there like a person assigned to you to help you or is it just a resource to go to? Yeah, just a resource. Honestly, mamas, you are pretty much on your own. Okay. But when on your own means if you are willing to link yourself with Heavenly Father in this or God, whoever you're, you know, what, what your belief system is you are not on your own you have got the very best resource out there period hands down um we just have got to stop thinking here and think here you know our hearts that's our connection that's what we need that's where the answers are you know do you ever find yourself you're you're having this this crisis you know and you're talking to somebody that you really trust and care about and you're talking to them about it and they say well have you prayed about it and you think, oh my gosh, how have I not prayed about it? How did I not go there first? You know, but we just, we get busy, we get caught up and we forget to go there first. Go there first. That's where you're going to have, that's where you're going to get the answers and the direction. Okay, so Jennifer, eighth grade curriculum ideas. Um, again, not to belabor a topic, but that's another thing, not not that there aren't resources and i absolutely encourage you to go out and find the resources however ask heavenly father what does my eighth grader need i mean i don't even do you know what does my this child need doesn't matter what grade they're in um what do they need what do they need for this year now i get it and i am not ignoring the fact that if you are going to create transcripts you have to be aware on some level of what they need to experience during these years so that they can have transcripts and go to college. But super interesting, the changes that are happening that like this year, you couldn't take the ACT or the SAT. Colleges are not requiring them this year because it wasn't an option and they're letting kids in. Lots of times homeschooling kids can get in without that. Um, Colleges, universities are changing. Um, people's ideas about colleges and universities are changing. Don't expect that the world that exists right now is the same one that's going to exist as each one of your kids gets to that age where they're done with school. I'm just going to share this little side example. I hope you see the connection, not, home, not homeschooling related. Mom, I know really good friend. She's a homeschooling mom, so I guess it's connected that way, but really good friend had the prompting sometime in this last year, get your home ready, get your stuff ready, start getting rid of stuff, start selling things, get ready to move your family to Canada. She's from Canada. She has family there. So it's, you know, not so weird, but get ready. She starts getting ready in her head knows well my husband has a job teaching at the university that's where our health insurance comes from so we can't leave yet so i'll just go about this rather slowly because i cannot picture in my head how this is going to work out how we could leave and move to canada and still maintain our health insurance got to have that health insurance right so i me mortal can't see your plan for me and my family so i'll just go about it at my pace i mean i'm sharing this with her i mean she knows she shared this right i'm not i'm and she thought it was a fabulous incredible learning experience so she shared okay lo and behold coronavirus comes up and rears its lovely head and changes life as we know it her husband teaches online oh my goodness borders to canada between canada and the united states are closed we cannot now follow that inspiration that direction because i didn't i didn't move i didn't follow the inspiration and direction that heavenly father gave me for my family so now we're going to ohio that was the next best you know that's where we go now and she says i i put a limit on heavenly father right I limited 
what he could do for my family because I couldn't see it. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourselves. Open yourselves up. Receive the direction and guidance from Heavenly Father. If it doesn't align with what you know is education and transcripts and college and whatever, please don't sweat that. It'll all work out. I'm not saying to not do that, but follow the direction that you receive from Heavenly Father. He knows the learning styles that your children need. He knows the curriculum or the books or the experiences or the adventures or the people to put them in contact with that will reach their hearts, that will make a difference for them and for you, for your families. And the thing is, get out of your head that your goal is limited to this earthly sphere. That is not what your calling is. That is not the um, what is, the stewardship responsibility the Heavenly Father gave you. It is eternal. You've got to have the eternal's perspective. Step back and you prepare them for that. That's what you're preparing them for. This is a tiny little part of that journey. So I'd say keep that in mind. <laughs> Anything else? Any comments? Any? And I promise these things that you ask about specifically, we will open those up for people to share resources and things because I get it. That is part of it. But as you study well-educated heart, you will see, um, you will, I love you, Courtney. You will see that um, she's trying to help you see that uh, you, it's really more about your heart and their hearts and then everything else will kind of fall in place. It really, really will. It's just hard to make that transition and get that, those old ideas out of your head. Thanks for staying with us. We will definitely, next week, I've been invited to join Erica's group again, Erica and Kathy and that group at 10 o'clock. So, so this meeting will kind of be, um, be enveloped in that. And then the next Friday, I'll do my own again. But I will send out the newsletter. They're going to give me a, a snippet of time. And I always take too much. I'm sorry. But I remember what it was like in the beginning. I remember needing somebody to hold my hand, to encourage me, to be my cheerleader. You know, um, that's important in the early days. Um, so send the questions. Send the comments. Kathy, please. Hold on. Got to unmute, unmute you. Oh. Does that work? Here we go. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, to all of you ladies, I'm so grateful that you joined the meeting today. I also wanted to say as you go about your next few weeks and as you're preparing and praying about what to do for your family and how to proceed, um, write down some questions and thoughts and we will open it up for a lot of discussion next week as well because there are going to be some specific things that you're going to wonder about and say, would this work? And, and what about my schedule for that? And would this, how do you, how'd you do it this age or that age? And, and things like that, your own circumstances that will be unique. And if you'd like some, some um, personal input on that, you know, write those things down because we would love to share our experiences and what has helped us. I have learned so much from Lori and I'm so thankful that she did this meeting today. Thanks Lori. And it's so fun to see you all here. And you know, it's a wonderful journey. It's just so awesome. It gets better and better. So I, hands down, it's wonderful. Everything Lori said was fantastic. So good job. You everybody. were so nice. You guys are so nice. Remember when other mamas talk to you? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All the potential roadblocks and obstacles, those can be moved.